we're going to continue with uh, a couple of things. <coughs> excuse me. Um, I wanted to uh, relate to you that it's not really, excuse me, a matter of going to get another job or adding another job. There's ways you can get ahead without having to actually do uh, physical labor, uh, although there is some mental labor that's involved. And part of the equation, and let me see if I can kind of relate this to you. There's a natural healing doctor. Uh, his name is Dr. John R. Christopher. And he was, to the best of my knowledge, the only natural healing practitioner that was hired by the military um, to, to so far, as far as I know. And uh, the thing of it was, here was a guy who, you know, had an extensive background in herbs and medicinal medicine type of stuff. And yet he himself had contracted um, a form of cancer. And he didn't know how he, had, you know, how he got this because, you know, here with all his knowledge and understanding and, uh, you know, he, he put into practice, you know, what he, what he preached in his daily life. And pretty much uh, what happened was is he did the psychoanalysis on his brain. How did I get this? Um, and uh, what I mean by psychoanalysis, and we try to figure out what, what's going on. He went to see a, a, a therapist, and uh, the therapist uh, asked him a series of questions, and here's really the, the, the main event. We talked a little bit before about the space within the atomic structure, uh, and that space is the magnetic field that exists in everything. There isn't anything that exists without it and that that is influenced by our thoughts. The, the guide, the gauge, I guess, to determining what you're thinking about is your emotional uh, stance. If you're happy, you know, you'd have to ask yourself a question, why am I happy? What am I thinking about that's making me happy? Oh, you know, I just enjoy looking at the apple trees in the orchards or whatever it is. Maybe you're in the w woods and you're observing birds and just creates happiness for you. Maybe you're sad and you say, well, what happened? Why am I sad? And you analyze, you know, uh, you know, why am I sad? But then you think to yourself, let me think for a second here. I have been happy before. And what was it that I was doing to make me happy? I'm going to do that again. You know, despite the fact that I may be in a situation presently that's making me unhappy, I can still be happy regardless of the situation. And that's one of the things that we as human beings have advantage over any of God's other creatures, the animals and what have is we have the ability to think in direct opposition to whatever our circumstances are. And the emotions that we feel are the indicators that we have that tell us whether we are uh, vibrating in a positive field or the negative field. There's some recent science uh, of bioscience, which is a, it's a technical name for the simplicity that I'm trying to explain to you now, but Dr. Christopher ended up with the cancer, and it was discovered that at the age, he was in his 30s, when he found this out, it was like an aha moment. Something clicked inside of him and says, you know, gee, I, I didn't realize I had been happy-go-lucky on the outside, dealing with people on a regular basis, going about my life on a, on a regular uh, schedule, and but in the back of his mind, in the back of his being, um, it's almost as if you would have a, say, a cello, where you take that cello and you play that low note, and boom, boom. It's this negative vibration that you don't even know it's there because you are so accustomed to having it there. But one day you recognize and notice that it's there. And what had happened is he found out that uh, at the age of one and a half, he remembered at age one and a half that his parents had dropped him off at an orphanage and never came back and picked him up. And he, he held disdain for his parents for doing that. Um, it was just so buried deep inside, but yet if you stop and think about it, it really wasn't buried deep inside. It was a dominant uh, thing going on within him. And, and this is, is really, you know, kind of where, where I'm, what I want to do today because 
uh, is to t talk to you about recognizing that maybe you'll have your own aha moment. That's the reason that we have hobbies. Find a hobby. Get yourself a hobby where you can take your mind off of everyday type of things. I'm going to talk about the left side and the right side again real quick. Uh, Gordon Ramsay, one of the chefs you've probably seen, uh, he'll go to a restaurant that may be failing or not doing well. And uh, based on his expertise, he will turn that restaurant around. And what he's done to do that is he's changed the thinking of the individuals there in that restaurant. He's changed the vibration. That negative cello playing in the background. Um, whatever it is that you're not providing the right service for people or, or whatever it is that's bringing that restaurant down uh, through his influence and his uplifting ability by simply eliminating the negative vibe and instilling a more of a positive vibe. Well, what are you doing here? He would ask the restaurant people. And eventually, over a period of maybe a month or something, he'll change that restaurant. Only to go back in a number of cases, uh, he'll go back to that restaurant in three, four months and find out that they've slipped back down to that negative vibration again. And that has to do with this left side programming. It's buried deep down inside of you. Um, so you have to recognize the fact that you will bounce back and forth or the peaks and the valleys. And recognize, hey, I used to be there, but I'm not there anymore. Uh, as an ex-smoker, I mean, yeah, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. And whether you're an overeater, whether you're addicted to food, sugar, whatever it is, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore. Um, but that's for another talk. We're going to talk today about the penny jar thing. And the reason I brought up all this other stuff here is because the reason a group or an organization does not have a penny jar is because they really don't have any vision for what the future is going to be. Uh, my battery is done. Um, so what you want to do for your organization is to take a penny jar and this is going to be your future right here. You start by putting the first penny in it. It represents the future. If the eighth grade class, let's say there's an eighth grade class that has a uh, um, three classes of 30, that's 240 students. If each student were to put 10 cents a month into their penny jar for their organization, by the time they got to 12th grade, there would already be money there for them to learn to invest. But see, we're never, never taught this. The left side theory says it'll take too long. Well, how long does it take if you don't have a penny jar? Every day you don't have one takes even longer. If there's nothing there to invest, then what do you invest in? Well, we won't talk about that, says the that says the 95% world because we don't know anything about it. So whatever your organization is, and if, if you have a thousand people in your organization, probably only a small percentage is going to actually participate in this, and that's the only thing you want. Let everybody do what else, whatever it is they do, bless them, let them go on their way. But if you find or feel that you are a, 90, a 5 percenter stuck in that 95% world, then having a penny jar represents hope for the future. Um, whether you do this from the 8th grade level or the 6th grade level, I don't care what organization you belong to, having a penny jar represents future. I'm surprised at how many organizations don't have some sort of a, uh, an artist's rendering of what their building or property, or even if they don't have a building or property, you know, what does your future look like? You know, maybe you're uh, just starting out in business, and you know, and you're the only person in your business. 